Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to another episode of the Venom Vlog, and it's uh, really late on Monday night. I just got off work a couple hours ago, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to come home, take a little nap, and then I'm going to try to bang out a couple episodes for you guys, because obviously I know I'm behind. And one of the things I've been behind on is actually new content, and I know a lot of you guys want me to cover new stuff, like that Carnage miniseries that's been coming out. I think it's finally ending uh, this week on Wednesday, so I'll try to pick that up, and at some point I'll just I'll keep adding a couple episodes to our you know summer of carnage and our carnage week stuff and so uh so i just figured we're just going to blend it all together because i'm like i, I don't want to get too far behind on new stuff while we're still covering the old stuff so the jerry conway stuff that we got to get through there's three trade paperbacks and then we got to get through red goblin those are still part of our carnage week uh i'll still consider those carnage week but this is all kind of part of the summer of carnage still as well and uh starting off the summer of carnage is this episode with extreme carnage number one this is extreme carnage alpha number one i guess they're going to do an alpha and omega to bookend it and then they're going to do each life foundation symbiote is going to get their own one shot that takes place in between the you know alpha and omega book um so yeah that's what we got and I, of course i got a digital code for this so i'm going to give that away boom right there first person to put that code in uh, gets this and i also want to give a shout out to lonely symbiote who reached out to me and asked if i wanted a digital code and i said hey it's okay i want to make sure that my comic shop is holding this for me and it turns out i they were that which was really cool um and they i was actually they were holding this cover which is awesome because this is the trading card cover so of course i got this one and the uh, agent anti-venom cover and these connect so they actually go like this and pretty soon they'll all kind of connect uh, when you get all nine covers kind of like the old mark bagley uh, trading cards from the 90s did the spider-man cards so when i saw that i was like okay now i have to commit and buy all these covers uh, i'm not normally a variant guy but just the idea of having that image and the connection and the nod to the Mark Bagley stuff is awesome. Like, I'm, I'm totally into that. So uh, I gave out one digital code there. For the other one, we're going to save because we have episode 650 coming up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through any Marvel books that I bought for the past, like, two months, and uh, which hasn't been too many, but I'll just try to get them all write down all the codes and on episode 650 we'll do like a live episode where I just hang out and chat with you guys and we'll randomly throw out codes into the chat and stuff so make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out and I'll hand out some free comics that day uh, so that'll be fun um, so yes yeah, so extreme carnage alpha number one um, this book is uh, I actually uh, can't remember who worked on it Philip Kennedy Johnson is the writer um, he was the one who wrote the flash story I think recently in the Venom 200 like those few pages that talk about Flash Thompson um, and that was obviously to set this story up and the art on this is by Manuel uh, Garcia and uh, and actually the art is really fantastic the book starts off right where we last saw Cletus Cassidy where well, actually Cletus is dead 100% dead but the symbiote still kind of carries his essence I guess in a way and obviously we know it bonded to a shark um, and it swam out into sea at the end of, uh, of Venom Island, I think it was. So we haven't seen or heard from Carnage since. But what it's been doing is it made its way to shore. And it's been, you know, chomping on uh, locals in other countries and finding its way back to um, New York City. And it's he's got, or it's got, some kind of plan. Uh, and then meanwhile, while that's happening in New York City, we have this guy who, uh, his name is Crane, Senator Crane. Um, and he is you know, running for senator, or he is a senator, I think, and he's trying to get more support, I guess. Um, and he's bringing this uh, issues, uh, you know, to the president about aliens. So he's uh, kind of like a xenophobe type guy, or at least he's running off of that. So there's a whole scene where the senator is with his people, like, you know, his advisors and stuff. And you find out that he's not even really anti-alien. Uh, he's just running on that platform because he knows it'll get him supporters um that right there just having that in there i i liked i thought that was neat because that is what senators do like a lot of people are like oh i like this guy they're running for this or they stand for that or whatever typically they don't they don't at all they just find something that is a hot button issue or something that will rally um passionate responses and they pick a side and you know sometimes it's they pick like a coin flip you know they're like they don't really care or aren't committed to one or the other they just do it because they know it'll get them supporters and it'll get them in the limelight and it'll get them press coverage and all that stuff it, they're fake as hell and that's what i liked about this was they portray this guy as fake he doesn't actually believe in any or, or at least it doesn't seem like he believes any of the rhetoric or bullcrap he's spreading and saying he's just 
he's just saying it. Uh, and I'm like, that's what a senator is. So I got to give it to Philip Kennedy Johnson. Like, that was awesome that he put that in there. Because I just, I thought that made it, for me, as someone who was like, uh, you know, because I know that's a, a button where people are like, oh, they're getting political. Of course, there's a racist group. It's like, ah, but I kind of like the spin that they put on it. Well, it's not even a spin. They just showed it how it is in reality, which I liked. Um, but the why is there the Friends of Humanity? Why is there this group popping up? And, you know, against aliens. What's that about? Well, obviously the king in black, you know, after symbiotes took over pretty much the whole world for like a whole day or two, um, now humanity is, is extremely scared. And this senator is using that as a platform to gain, you know, to garner more, um, you know, uh, publicity, to get more supporters. And it looks like he has aspirations to maybe be president one day. So he's kind of using this, uh, this rising um, tension in the world uh, and this, uh, this, you know, confusion off of, you know, this alien invasion, like he's kind of like swooping in and, and vulturing people's emotions. And that's typically what senators do. <laughs> they, that's what he does. So, uh, so I kind of liked all that. So he's basically now that the humanity has survived that attack, he's saying, but when is the next attack going to come? And we can't always count on the Avengers and everyone to save us. Um, you know, we got to, we got to be ready for this and we got to, you know, build something in space that keeps aliens out. You know, he's kind of that kind of guy. Um, so I, all that I just found interesting. Um, I just thought that was neat how they did that. And like I said, meanwhile, while that's happening, you have the carnage suit uh, killing people and going across the country, which is so funny because I literally just uh, did the video right before this one where I talked about superior carnage and I recorded the audio for it. And uh, and that's what that whole thing's about, is about carnage. Uh, in one of the issues, it's like moving its way across the U.S. in the annual trying to get back to Cletus Cassidy. <laughs> so I just thought that was funny that that was happening again, uh, where the suit is just going to find a host in New York, uh, even though it's not Cletus this time because Cletus is dead, but it's still moving its way to New York. Uh, but while that all that's going on, you have Flash Thompson, who is dropping off food to a homeless shelter. He's working with a friend of his who was all, who's also a former soldier, and he's you know they're working together to, to do these nice things like dropping off food and uh, donating their time and stuff. Um, but they're also both looking for work and looking for a job, which is sometimes can be hard for people after the even though having military stuff on your resume can sometimes get you a job. But some people who come back and are were affected by their time at war, um, it's hard to acclimate right into into a workforce sometimes. Um, and so these guys are talking about how how tough it is to find work and things. I liked all that. I thought that was was really great. And meanwhile, while that's happening, Flash can now apparently see through the eyes of Carnage or through the symbiote's eyes. So he's seeing Carnage kill people, making its way to New York, uh, which I find interesting because he doesn't actually have a symbiote right like if i'm not mistaken and we're going to get there because we'll talk about um you know flash as uh, An agent anti-venom when we get to the alchemex stuff in uh, mike carey's run because that's what i was reading when we first started the show but i never covered it so we'll cover that you know coming up later this year um so i'll probably get the answers in but if one of you has the answers now feel free to let me don know down in the comments um I, I didn't know he had an actual symbiote. I thought it was like a synthetic thing that was made um, at Alchemex. Like I know there was an anti-venom symbiote in a way, but it, that also wasn't really a symbiote. Uh, that was um, the, the the cells or the codex or whatever inside Eddie being uh, affected by Mr. Negative's powers. And it turned like his cancer cells and his uh, the, the few dormant uh, or dead symbiote cells in them, it reversed them, right? And caused anti-venom. So I don't know if and he, so Eddie never talked to Anti-Venom like a symbiote and Flash doesn't really do that for this so I find it weird that he still has a connection but I guess that makes sense because he was in the void of symbiotes in, in King in Black and that maybe that gives him the connection so I, I don't know maybe you guys can maybe I just answered the question myself but maybe one of you guys have a better explanation but let me know because that threw me off for a second not that it hurts the story at all but it just threw me off for a second um, but Flash is seeing these memories and it caused him to react and he turns into the symbiote and he almost attacks his friend and his friend's like, oh my God, what are you doing? And he's like, Flash, knock it off. And he's like, Hank, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, dude. Like, you know, I didn't mean for you to find out this way. You know, I'm so sorry. I got to get out of here. And he runs off and runs into Iron Man. And Iron Man basically tries to recruit Flash for his expertise. He says, look, man, you've had interactions with symbiotes um, and you're back from the dead, apparently. And it seems like you just told me because on their way to his, uh, you know, to Tony Stark's lab or whatever, they're talking and he says like you just told me that you can kind of see through carnage's eyes or the symbiote's eyes there are other symbiotes out there 
that are scared, some need help, some are vicious. Um, like there, there's a, a pretty much a whole ball of mess of different types of symbiotes out there and I need your help finding them. And uh, he's like, and I wanna show you a project I'm working on. So Tony still has that Iron Man suit that was infected with Extremis that has a dragon wrapped around it. He still has it, uh, which I'm like, oh, that's a neat plot thread. I didn't think they were going to continue on with, um, but I'm glad they are. Uh, but then he also says, but I'm also tracking symbiotes and the Life Foundation symbiotes and other ones are still out there. And I kind of need your help to go find them. Um, so it looks like Flash has a mission, but he also gives Flash another mission. He says this senator guy who is like riling people up with ra racism kind of or xenophobia, I guess. Uh, he's like, uh, he's, he's this guy that is might be attacked um, because it seems like I have some evidence saying that, uh, you know, with him leading this charge against symbiotes and having people like, you know, uh, you know, strike out in fear because now people are like, you know, they're suspicious of each other, you know, like there is there a symbiote put on that person. I think that's why the Guardsman project was reactivated that we've seen recently and that will probably pop up in this too. So it seems like people obviously are reacting out of fear after what happened and humans are trying to take a stand against this thing, but they're also, you know, being fed propaganda by the senator guy. But Tony Stark is like, yeah, still, we can't have a senator or anyone, no matter if we agree with them or not, taken down or taken out like this. So we, I kind of need you to keep an eye on the senator uh, for protection. And when Flash goes to the, uh, you know, the rally and stuff where the Friends of Humanity meet, he learns that the senator himself is actually the host of Carnage. Carnage has already made it to New York and has bonded with the senator. So Flash is like, we need a plan. And uh, so he goes and recruits his friend, Hank. And he's like, Hank, you wanted a job. I found out that Senator Kane or Crane or whatever his name is. He's like, I found out he's hiring. And uh, and I think you should go work with him. But kind of as a, a, a someone to help me keep an eye on him uh, in case he's attacked again, even though Flash kind of knows he's Carnage. But he's like, he's like, it's a dangerous mission, what you're going to do. And he goes, but you were telling me that, you know, you miss the danger. You kind of miss being in combat. And he goes, um, and that, that, that feeling scared you. But I think we can direct that towards something positive. So what do you say? Would you like to go work for the senator? He's hiring right now. Um, and we could probably pull a few strings to get you in there, me and Tony Stark. And so his friend Hank's like, I'm in. So I'm kind of curious. I'm, I'm kind of curious to see if Hank ends up with one of the symbiotes, if he's going to be... Uh, you know, a recurring character after this. Um, if they keep telling Flash stories after this, will we see more of Hank? Because I'm kind of into the idea of Flash having a, a, a military buddy, but I also hope Flash, now that he's back, at some point tries to reach out for, you know, to, to connect with Andy, which may or may not happen in the next issue because the next part of this is uh, it's called Extreme Carnage Scream, uh, number one. And that comes out, I think, uh, in a couple days, like three or four days from now. So uh, I will make sure that I'm kind of caught up on videos by then so that way I can cover that. And, uh, you know, when that comes out and also the Jerry Conway uh, miniseries that we, or I guess it was like 16 or 18 issues. So not really a miniseries, but three trade paperbacks. I'll try to cover all the stuff and, and catch up um, up to that point uh, before this comes out. And then soon after Scream, We'll talk about the Jerry Conway stuff, and then we'll get into um, uh, the next one shot after that. And then from there, we'll go into uh, the the Red Goblin stuff. And that should hopefully catch us all up. So this is more of a month of Carnage as opposed to a Carnage week. But like I said, it's also kicking off summer of Carnage. So it's fine. So anytime you see the, the Carnage intro that I have, anytime you see that in front of a video, you know you're in for some uh, fun with Summer of Carnage here. Whether it's a Carnage week one or a Summer of Carnage one, that intro covers all that stuff. So uh, let me know what you think if you read this. Uh, I actually really enjoyed it. Like I said, um, it's a neat setup. There's a couple things in it that I was kind of mad about, but I'm I'm willing to see where they go before I comment on them because I, I feel like there's a, a decent foundation here and interesting enough, um, even though it's kind of rehashing stuff. Like the biggest problem I had with this was they were saying, this is humanity standing up. Like, you know, the uh, like Tony Stark says, this changed everything. When Null attacked, it changed everything. Humans now, you know, before we would save the world, and, you know, and humanity would never know they were in danger in most cases. And he goes, uh, he goes, but now they, everyone knows what a symbiote is, and it's changed everything. And I'm like, yeah, but people remember Secret Invasion. That was also an alien group that came in and pretended to be most of us and infiltrated us and that that to me was way more uh horrifying on some levels than just a symbiote army you know moving across the globe like the fact that literally the person next to us could be a scroll um that t totally 
could have changed the landscape of how people see each other in the Marvel Universe. So this seems like it's not that new, but they try to paint it as new. Like, And I, I hate that with Marvel when they try to say, like, oh, the recent event, that was the biggest deal ever. And it's like, that's like them forcing it to be a big deal when it's it's like okay yeah no attacking that was it was a big thing for sure but we've had galactus we've had thanos we've had infinity gauntlets we have scroll invasions we've we've had so many things this poor planet in the marvel universe uh has so many things uh, you know attack it and i don't think king and black would have changed the landscape this much i feel like this would have already been in place based off secret invasion and if the senator would have just been like look we had the scrolls a couple years ago and now this it's a time we take a stand. If he would have said that and acknowledged Secret Invasion, I probably would have been like, okay, yeah, okay, that, that makes sense. But since they don't, they make it to where King and Black is the only time aliens have ever invaded Earth. I'm kind of like, okay, that's that's forcing it, and that's pretty pretty shitty. So, uh, so I didn't like that. But other than that, you know, the story itself, at least in the characters, I'm intrigued to see where they go. And I'm looking forward to seeing where they go. So, uh, so again, I'll have more content for you guys very soon. I appreciate you guys, as always, for watching the show. Like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. And I'll see you all in the future. Peace.